the practice help us to touch the conditions of happiness in the here and the now so that we can generate a feeling of joy at any moment we want. And that is not too difficult. If you go back to your body, to, uh, if you bring your mind home to your body and uh, establish yourself in the here and the now, you will realize that conditions for your happiness are more than enough. And happiness is possible right in the here and the now. So to generate a moment of joy is possible. To generate a moment of happiness is also possible for a practitioner, no matter where and when. And the practice of mindfulness on, also helps us to recognize a painful feeling, a painful emotion when they manifest. A painful uh, feeling, we try we have the tendency to try to run away from it. We want to cover it up by consumption. If we uh, listen to music, if, if we uh, read magazines, if we uh, eat, maybe it's not because uh, these things are very, uh, uh, bring us a lot of happiness, but because we don't want to get in touch with the suffering. We want to cover it, cover it up with the consumptions. Obesity is the outcome of that. You have uh, the feeling of uh, loneliness, despair, anger, uh, worries in you, and you don't know how to handle. And that's why you want to forget to run away. And one of the ways is to just consume some music, magazines, food are there in order to help you to cover up your suffering. You do not solve the problem. But the practice consists in going home and take good care of that pain. Breathing in, I'm aware of the painful feeling in me. There is the energy of pain, of course. But as a practitioner, you generate the energy of mindfulness and concentration. And with the second energy, you recognize the first energy. Hello there, my little pain. I know you are there. I will take good care of you. So like a mother holding her baby when the baby suffers, the practitioner generate the energy of mindfulness and concentration and go home and take care of the painful feeling or the painful uh, emotion in him or in her and get a relief. So many young people who are not capable of handling a strong emotion. And they believe that the only way to, air, to, uh, to stop suffering is to go and kill themselves. That is why so many young people commit suicide everywhere. But we know very well that an emotion, whether it is strong, how, how, however strong it is, it is only an emotion. And we are much more than emo, an emotion. We don't have to. An emotion that is something that come and stay for some time and finally you have to go away. Why do we have to die because of just one emotion? That is what you can remind yourself when an emotion manifests in you. And if you know the practice of mindful breathing, mindful walking, generating the energy of mindfulness, you can very well recognize and embrace that emotion and you are safe. An emotion is like a, a storm coming, and there are ways in order to stand and not to allow the, the storm to blow you away. The practice of deep breathing 
in the position of sit, sitting or lying down. Focus your attention on the rise and fall of your abdomen. And just that, stop all the thinking. Because the more you think the emotion, the, the stronger the emotion can become. Stopping the, the, the thinking. Bring your mind down to the level of uh, the navel. And breathe in deeply and become aware of the rise and fall of your abdomen. And stay in that position and continue. And your emotion could not do any, not be able to do anything to you. And after five minutes, ten minutes, or even half an hour, the emotion will go and you will survive it. And next time you, and you say that next time when it comes, you do just that. It's easy enough. We should train ourselves only a few times. And every day if we know how to, to do it for a few minutes, and then after a few weeks become, it will become a habit. And when that emotion manifests, you will remember to practice. And you are no longer afraid of an emotion. So when the baby suffer, the mother should be there in order to pick up the baby and hold the baby tenderly. The mother does not know what is the cause of the suffering of the baby, but the fact that she is holding the baby tenderly can already make the baby suffer less. Because the energy of tenderness begins to penetrate into the baby that brings a relief. And after having hold the child for, for a few minutes, the mother might find out what is wrong with the baby, and she can change the situation easily. The same is true with the practitioner. In the beginning, she does not know what is the root of that pain, that emotion. But the fact that she is able to hold it tenderly without uh, 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 been, um, using uh, with try, attempt to run away can already bring a relief and with uh, a little bit more of concentration and uh, mindfulness we can discover the nature, the roots of our emotion and uh, that will help uh, uh, transform the emotion and the pain and if uh, adult father, mother, school teachers know how to do that, they will teach uh, the young people how to do it. It's easy enough to learn. And therefore, a practitioner of mindfulness is capable of releasing the tension in her body, reduce the pain in his body, generate a feeling of joy whenever he wants, generate a feeling of happiness whenever she wants, uh, recognize and embrace a painful feeling, uh, recognize and embrace a painful emotion. All these things can be learned. We hope that in the future, our uh, uh, this kind of practice can be taught in school at every level. We are trying uh, to do that. We have uh, met with uh, school teachers in many countries, and they all agree that this is uh, something they must uh, learn and bring into the classroom and help uh, the young people. The miracle of uh, transformation and healing 
always happen in our retreats. Uh, during this uh, American, uh, North American tour, we have uh, offered a retreat in Vancouver for 800 uh, people. After that, uh, another retreat for nine, more than 900 in, uh, in Colorado. And we just finished one in uh, Southern California, Escondido, for uh, 700 people. And the miracle of uh, transformation and healing always happened. And using the practice of uh, compassionate listening and gentle speech, many people are able, are capable of uh, restoring communication and uh, reconcile. And there are those of us who can use uh, our mobile phone to practice listening with compassion and using loving speech in order to reconcile with those who are at home who are not in the retreat. And we have been offering so many retreats like that in the world and seeing that the effect, the, 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 the result, the fruit of the practice, uh, we are encouraged in this practice. That is why as the monks and nuns and lay practitioners, we want to continue. We want because uh, that brings us a lot of happiness. And we want to share the practice and to help many people to suffer less. And that is why we are kind of uh, we, are, we want also success. But our success, uh, our our willingness to succeed, does does not remove us from the present moment. Our practice is to, is to be ground always in the present moment. We know that uh, the future is made only of one element, that is the present moment. And if uh, we take care of the present moment the best way we can. It means that we have done everything we can do for the future. And that is uh, our practice, uh, to be there in the here and the now and do our best with that. And do not let us, and do not let the worries, uh, uh, the projects uh, uh, carry us uh, away. I think uh, many uh, are successful in their, in their career, but many have become victims of their own success. They are not happy. Happiness is not uh, The aim of uh, when we do something, we want uh, to succeed. But uh, is that worthwhile to continue if, uh, if this, that succeed does not bring happiness? And many have become victims of their own success. And uh, although they succeed in their enterprise, their, but uh, happiness is not there. They have no time to love, to live their life. They have no time for themselves. They have no time for their beloved one. I know a successful businessman in Germany. His name is Fred, Fred Frederick. He's uh, only 40. He's a very successful businessman. But his wife, uh, Laura, suffered very deeply because of loneliness. 
because Frederick did not have the time, even for himself and for for her and for the son. She tried to suffer less by um, doing uh, human humanitarian work. She tried to forget her loneliness by um, uh, going to school and get another uh, degree. But that did not help. And she cried during the night. And he said that, darling, no one can replace me now. I have to wait uh, three, four years before I can find someone to replace me. And then we will have more time for ourselves and for our son. For the moment, no one can replace me. And that, uh, that promise was never been fulfilled because uh, six months later he got killed in an accident, car accident. He was so busy that when his wife uh, was hospitalized, he could not have the time to go to the hospital. And even when his uh, son, Philip, was hospitalized, he could not go to the hospital because uh, his time, his energy is sucked by the will to succeed. And you know what happened? Only three days after his death, they, re- they found someone to replace him. And Frederick is still alive. In uh, there are many Frederick uh, uh, among us, and many Laura uh, among us. We have to wake up from that. We have to learn how to uh, change our way of life in order to be. To, uh, to be truly alive. And the practice of mindfulness help us uh, bring real uh, love, real happiness to our life. That four, there are four uh, elements of true love that happiness, uh, that mindfulness can help uh, generate. The first element of true love is um, love and kindness, my tree. That is uh, the capacity to make uh, another person happy. And we have already learned that uh, if we cannot make ourselves uh, peaceful, fresh, and happy, we cannot make another person happy. The, the practice of mindfulness help restore solidity, freedom, peace, and freshness to us so that we can, we have, we have the capacity to make the other person happy. The second element of true love is uh, compassion, karuna. That capacity of uh, understanding the suffering and help remove it. If you love someone, you should understand the suffering in him or in her. And you should be able to help uh, transform that and remove that. And that you can do only after you have done it for you. You have fear, anger, despair in you. And if you don't know how to transform it, how can you help your beloved one to do the same? So understanding the suffering inside and bring a relief and transformation is very crucial for love. And then you'll be able to help your beloved one uh, uh, transform the suffering. So that is the second element of true love. The capacity to help someone suffer less. And the third element of true love is a joy is joy. 
because true love always uh, generates joy for you and for the other person. It, if uh, both of us cry during the process of loving, that's not true love. True love should bring joy every moment of our daily life. And mindfulness can help doing that. And the fourth element is, um, of true love is uh, inclusiveness. In true love, there's no longer any frontier between you and your beloved one. Your suffering is his suffering. His happiness is your happiness. And there is a perfect uh, mutual understanding between two of you. And together you can serve and help uh, many people. True love is the kind of love that always grows. It has no frontier. And practicing true love, you begin to embrace everyone, the whole planet, and bring a lot of joy to you. And that is why we have to know where we go. If love is our destination, and then we have to sacrifice other things that is not love, like fame, wealth, sensual pleasure, power. Because there are those who are, have plenty of these things and who suffer very deeply. And uh, when, my, when I was ordained as a monk at the, at the age of 16, my, 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 my teacher gave me the name, the Dharma name uh, Nyakhan, which means one action. You do only one thing. You don't do many things at the same time. Monotasking. And I try to, to live according to this, uh, this teaching. I want to transform myself. I want to help people happy. Because I know that if people are happy, I can be happy also. And that is why Buddhist concentration, Buddhist meditation is made of two of two elements. The first element is uh, concentration. You focus your attention just one, just on one thing. Otherwise, your concentration is not powerful enough to get a breakthrough and to get insight. And concentration can be practiced, not by thinking, but by brushing your teeth in mindfulness, washing your dishes in mindfulness, watering the vegetable in mindfulness, enjoying every step. That will make the concentration more and more powerful, and your store consciousness will bring you offer the insight that you need. And that is why the first, uh, the first uh, element of Buddhist meditation is uh, samadhi concentration. And the second is uh, vipassana, means uh, looking deeply, looking deeply. You concentrate on just one thing, and you only look deeply into that one thing. And that is the technique, as the secret of uh, bringing up insight. I think uh, concerning informations, we know that uh, we have the feeling that we are overwhelmed by informations. We don't need that much information. We just need a few. And there are basic informations that uh, we should uh, 
we should uh, maintain our life. Because there are many things we know, but we never put into practice. So your happiness does not depend on how much information you have, but how, what kind of information that you have, and how you put into practice that kind of information. And the basic information is that uh, we are alive. Breathing in, I know I am alive. And breathing out, I can touch all wonders of life in me and around me in this moment. And that can cultivate my happiness. That can make me an instrument of love. And I can help, I can love. So let us have the rest of our time for a few questions. Thank you.